So a recent article came out with Newsweek talking about insurance premium in the state of Florida is up in some places 900%. And you read this article, so, oh my God, this whole Florida thing, maybe it's a gimmick. Maybe they're not doing as good of a job. And if you look at the article, it says 275,000 people left the state of Florida. In some places, premiums gone from $1,700 to $4,200 per year. How are people making these things happen? Farmers, massive company, just announced they're leaving the state of Florida. It was so bad that the CFO of Florida Florida. Jimmy came out and said, Farmers is the Budweiser, Anheuser Bush of the insurance industry because they follow this ESG score. So, what is really going on in Florida? Are they targeting DeSantis? Are they targeting Florida because they had the best reputation during COVID and California got destroyed? Who knows? What I do know is we got all these slides to go through today on what the hell is going on in Florida with insurance. Okay, so if you get value out of this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. But listen, to the people from California, you're watching this video saying, Oh my gosh, finally, redemption time. He's going to attack Florida and California is going to come back to being the winner. Hang tight. Listen, the reason why I have a different perspective than some of you is for the following reason. Imagine if a man had dated Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor, and Sophia Loren. To me, all dimes, right? He can probably give you perspective on all three. Now, I have not dated those three, okay? But I have dated California for 24 years. I dated Texas for five years, and I'm still dating Florida for two and a half years to kind of give you some context. Having said that, before you jump to conclusion, whether you're pro-Florida, pro-Texas, or pro-California, hang tight till the end of the video. When you jump to conclusion, wait for the data. Let's get right into it. So, stats. Home insurance premiums have tripled in the state of Florida the past five years. Florida average is more than $4,200 per year. National average is $1,700. Some insurance premiums have risen by nine times what they were in 2022, according to the chief executive of NSI Insurance Group, and construction costs has risen by 40% since 2017. Again, they give this data. This is Florida. This is what's going on. Super expensive. All right. Next one, Newsweek. I told you earlier, Florida resident flee state as insurance premiums skyrocket up to 900%. They're not lying. This is actually happening in some places in Florida. In the same article, when people are reading stats, people don't go and investigate even more. They're like, oh my God, did you see how many people they said left? How many? 275,000 people estimated left Florida. Nearly 23,000 people every month. And according to the Bureau, they relocated to places like Georgia, 46,000. Carolina, 42,000. Tennessee, 36. South Carolina, 31. Texas, 30,000. This must be a bad thing. A lot of people are leaving the state up. Florida. Man, we were all talking about how many people left California, where they were kind of like, since 1851, we've never had this kind of numbers of people leaving California. The whole U-Haul, you know, joke that they would say, you know, Gavin Newsom is the number one U-Haul salesman because he's got so many people renting U-Hauls to leave the state of California, right? So this shows Florida bad. But when you go and look at U.S. Census Bureau of net positive versus net negative, guess who is still number one in that negative in 2022. You ready, California? You're not going to like this, okay? Here you go. You ever wonder why Jamie Dimon, CEO of Chase, has a $900 million art collection, or Steve Cohen, $1.1 billion art collection, or Microsoft has nearly a billion dollar collection, the company, 5,000 art pieces in 180 different locations worldwide. Why? Because billionaires and millionaires understand one of the ways to hedge against inflation, money being printed, market crash, interest rates is to buy non-duplicatable assets and one of them is art, fine art. And that's why today's sponsor is Masterworks. Let me tell you a little bit about Masterworks. You may be watching the same Pat, I'm not a millionaire or a billionaire. I can't afford to buy Warhol or Banksy or Basquiat. How am I going to buy that? Well, Masterworks allows you to buy fractional shares. Like buying a share of Apple, you buy a share of a Banksy painting or a Warhol piece. You're able to do that through Masterworks. This is why over 800,000 people have signed up with Masterworks. Offerings have sold out within minutes, and many of you have already created accounts, and some of you that haven't. This is your chance to skip the waiting list and start your collection today. Just click on the link in the description, go to masterworks.art forward slash value team. And once again, masterworks.art forward slash value team, or click on the link below. California, minus 343. 1,000 people left California. According to Census Bureau, New York, minus 299,000 people left. Illinois, minus 141,000 people left. But if you go to the net positive state, guess who's at the top? Florida, number one. Domestic net migration, 2022. Florida, number one, 318,000. See, Newsweek, you didn't tell the whole story. You know who number two is? Texas, 230,000. Then it's Carolinas, then it's Tennessee, then it's Georgia, Arizona, Idaho, Alabama, Oklahoma, Nevada. You get the idea. At the bottom is California, New York, Illinois, Jersey, Massachusetts. Blue, 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 blue. Get the idea? What's going on here? What people are doing? 
bad policies have consequences, but they're targeting Florida. So let's continue with this whole Florida concept, seeing what else they're going to tell us. Since 2017, 11 property and casualty companies that offered homeowners insurance in Florida liquidated. Five of those companies liquidated in 2022, meaning they're, they're liquidating. They're no longer wanting to do business in the state of Florida. Five of those companies left in 2022, United Property and Casualty Insurance Company left in 2023. Okay. This is obviously not a good look. When you look at the Florida company's liquidation, this is what you'll find. American Capital Insurance Group, uh, Avatar Property and Casualty, FedNat, Florida Specialty, Guarantee Insurance Company, Gulfstream, Physicians United Plan, Southern Fidelity Insurance, St. John's, United Property, Universal Healthcare, Universal Healthcare Inc., Western Property and Casualty, Windhaven Insurance Company. The list is here. You can find this. It's all over the place. Not hard to find. However, several factors. Number one, they left for high threat of widespread weather-related damage. Okay, fair. Florida's got hurricanes, all the stuff they talk about. Number two, insurance fraud driven by fraudulent roofing claims. Number three, Florida accounts for 9% of country's home insurance claims. It is home to 79% of the country's home insurance lawsuits. And by the way, some of these can be addressed by the governor. So let's see what Governor DeSantis did. Underwriting, Florida property insurance are projected to post a cumulative underwriting law loss of $1.7 billion for 2021 due to these runway litigation costs. According to Mark Friedlander, Director of Corporate Communications at the Insurance Information Institute, this is from 2022 and 2023. Let's continue. Senate Bill 2D, signed by Governor DeSantis in May of 2022, enacts pro-consumer measures to help alleviate rising insurance costs, increases insurance claim transparency, and cracks down on frivolous loss that drive up costs for all Floridians. So what does this mean? For the longest time, these guys don't have to report how much it costs. Now they're like, no, no. Why are you charging me this much? Because of this. Okay. Disclose it. We need to know. There's got to be transparency. He's holding them accountable. So, so for some of you that want more intel, let's go a little bit deeper and kind of see what Governor DeSantis did. So this is what you'll find here on, on flgov.com. Property insurance legislation. The bills proposed provides both short and long-term relief for Floridians. That's good. Provides grant funding for homeowners to make their homes more resilient to storms, resulting in insurance premium discounts. Number three, reforms the legal environment to reduce frivolous lawsuits. And last but not least, cracks down on fraudulent roofing scams and predatory actors. That's very good. By the way, this has happened. I've been in life insurance. There was a lot of fraudulent going on in life insurance and Medicare, many different things. This is actually very normal for states to do. So he's taking the right actions. Now let's go a little bit deeper. Pro-consumer measures provides $2 billion in reinsurance relief to benefit policyholders over the next two years, dedicates $150 million to the My Safe Florida Home Program, which provides grants to Floridian home homeowners for hurricane, retrofitting, making homes safer and other resilient and more resistant to hurricane damage, results in premium discounts for homeowners who participate in the program, and requires the Department of Financial Services to report the average annual amount of premium discount for participating Floridians. This prohibits insurance companies from denying coverage based on the age of a roof that is less than 15 years and strengthens office of insurance regulation oversight of insurance companies to better detect and prevent insolvencies. Again, this is all good things that he's doing. But when you do this, you're kind of putting insurance companies in corner and they're kind of saying, well, it's not as lenient, man. I want to kind of leave because I can make profit other places. That could also happen. That's the risk when you come up with certain regulations like this. So increases insurance claim transparencies. Number one, prohibits insurance companies from denying claims without communicating sufficient reason. They need that. You know how many times you get rejected? Can you tell me why? Nope, we don't need to tell you. You need to now tell the client why you're doing that. Number two, provides consumer greater access to information during the claim adjustment process. Number three, requires insurance to provide adjusted reports to policyholders in a timely manner. And last but not least, anti-fraud and legal reforms cracks down on predatory actors who file fraudulent roof claims, reducing litigation costs, which are passed on to Floridians and limits the assignment of attorney's fees to contractors and property insurance cases, de-incentivizes frivolous claims and further stabilizing premiums. What does this do? Those who are doing these things, those actors are going to say, I'm no longer going to do business in Florida and I'm going to leave. And it's going to actually increase the quality of business that people are doing. And the actors that are trying to take advantage, they leave. So now somebody may say, but Pat, you know, this is great. You know, you could lose a customer here and there on some of those insurance companies you read. We've never heard of those companies, but everybody knows farmers. Isn't farmers like massive? You're right. Farmers is massive. So what does uh, farmers do? Farmers insurance has become the latest insurance company to pull out of Florida. They said the move will affect only companies company branded policies, which account for about 30% of policies sold in the state. Fourth major insurer to leave the Florida market in the past year with most citing the risk from hurricanes. So what are some of the big insurance companies that have left Florida? Here you go. You got Farmers, Lexington, Centurion, Bankers have left Florida. So now if you're thinking like me, you're asking the question, is it just Florida that farmers left or are there other states they don't do business with? And is there a pattern with these states? Like what do they do? Here's a list of states that farmers doesn't do business with. Alaska, where is it at? Coast. Delaware, coast. 
Hawaii, coast, Maine, coast, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Vermont, West Virginia. All of these places are in a place where they have a higher chance of getting some risk. And by the way, even in the state of California, they kind of have a creative way where they don't necessarily do with everybody, but they're a little bit tighter and stricter in who they underwrite. So now the questions I want to know is, is this happening across the board in America or is it just a Florida thing? What states are premiums increasing more than others and what states is lower? Here's a list for you. Okay, so if you look at the largest increase, Florida is at the top, 35%. That number is a real number. Then it's Idaho, Colorado, South Dakota, Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Arizona, Nebraska, you see the list of names. Some people may say it's only the red states that are increasing. How about the blue states? Go to blue states. Smallest increase. Vermont. We know who's from there. The legendary Bernie Sanders. New York. We know where New York leans. California. Nevada. Maine, New Hampshire, Wisconsin, they had a smaller increase. So why is that? Some states, like I've been in the life insurance industry for 20 plus years. You ever heard of New York Life? You heard of New York Life? You know what's one of the worst businesses to do insurance in? New York. And New York Life is from New York. How weird is that? That's one of the hardest states to do insurance with. Why? Overly regulated. So you have to balance over regulation because then people don't want to do business there. And you have to also balance under regulation where insurance companies can kind of just come and say, nope, you got to pay for this and we don't have to explain it. Florida has to kind of figure out where they stand with this ranking here. So one argument some people are making are saying, well, listen, this is all because Governor DeSantis took such hard lines when it comes down to ESG and it's one of the biggest anti-ESG states. And when you look at this map here based on Bloomberg, you'll see this. Red are the anti-ESG states with the most laws against them. Then you have those who boycott the law, those who are both anti-ESG and boycott. Then you got the, the divestment and the pro-ESG law. If you notice Florida on the bottom right is anti-ESG. And Farmers is one of those companies that is fully committed to making sure they have a high ESG score. So one would say, well, those stories kind of go together and maybe behind closed doors, somebody influenced Farmers to leave. Florida because, you know, Florida is not really an ESG company, ESG state. That could be something to consider. So I want you to see this exchange of different thoughts from the CFO of Florida, Jimmy. He continues, but I also want you to hear what the CEO of Farmers have to say. Watch this. So Jimmy says, while they're bad at helping people, this is Farmers, is what he's saying, they're good at virtue signaling. Instead of focusing on their policyholders and running a functioning business, the insurer became the first U.S.-based insurer to become signatory of the United Nations Principles for Sustainable Insurance. Very interesting. Okay, first to do that. Now watch this. Here's a response from the CEO of Farmers and see if there's anything about ESG there. This is him. Farmers is committed to operating in a way that positively impacts our customers, our employees, and communities by incorporating environmental, social, and governance, ESG, considerations into our business. So maybe the CFO of Florida was right on what farmers is focused on. We'll see. Now let's see if uh, you know the CFO, Jimmy Petronas, knows what he's talking about. Maybe he's just kind of upset at what they did. Let's actually go to the UN website and see if we can find farmers. Here's what we found. UN influence, last signatory stats, 151 signatories, 103 supporting institutions. If we look further, the UN influence convened by Geneva, Switzerland-based secretariat, more than 500 banks and insurers with assets exceeding, ready, $170 trillion. That's a lot of influence working together to facilitate the implementation of UNEP, FI's principles for responsible banking and principles for sustainable insurance, as well as the three UN convened net zero alliances. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, to learn more about UNEP FI, this organization founded in 1992 was the first organization to engage with finance sector on sustainability and incubated the principles for responsible investment, now the world's leading proponent of responsible investment. Today, we cultivate leadership and advance sustainable market practice while supporting the implementation of global programs at a regional level across Africa, Middle East, Asia Pacific, Europe, Latin America, Caribbean, and North America. Principles for Sustainable Insurance PSI established in 2012 by UNEP and today applied by one quarter of the world's insurers, 25% of world premium. PRI established in 2006 by the United Nations and the UN Global Impact and applied by half the world's institutional investors. Again, $83 trillion by 2022. That's a lot of assets. It's a lot of money. And by the way, the three finance sectors that they were talking about for the Net Zero Alliance, the first one is Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance AOA, launched in 2019 with a membership of more than 70 institutional assets with over 10 trillion dollars in assets, about 7% of global investment. Number two, Net Zero Banking Alliance, NZBA, launched in 2021 with over 100 banks and US $65 trillion in assets, about half of the global banking industry assets. And last but not least, Net Zero Insurance Alliance, NZIA, launched in 2021, convening 25 leading insurance representing about 12% of world premium. And, and by the way, guess who's on that list? UN Influence. Bingo. When you look at this, Farmers Insurance. Who knows? Maybe Farmers left because they're being pressured by UN, ESG, DEI. Who knows? Knows. But there's some influence there when a state like Florida 
And Governor Ron DeSantis says, I don't support you bullying your ESG policies in my state with UN. And he makes all that noise. There's a lot of quiet people that nobody knows their names or their faces behind closed doors going to work to say, I don't like this guy. We have to make their life hard. Guess what? Let's expose him. Let's write a bunch of things about the state of Florida and hurt his reputation when he's running for president. Is that true? Is it not happening? I don't know. But it's worth speculating that there's a possibility of that happening. So, so if you're watching and saying, Pat, I don't even know about the war with him again at ESG. Are we just making this up? I've not been following this story. What's DeSantis said about ESG? Well, let's take a deeper dive and kind of see what he said about ESG. August 2022, Governor Ron DeSantis, along with fellow trustees of the State Board of Administration, SBA, passed a resolution directing the state of Florida's fund manager to invest state funds in a manner that prioritizes the highest return on investment for Florida. Florida's taxpayers and retirees without considering the ideological agenda of the environmental, social, and corporate governance movement, ESG. Florida pulled $2 billion from BlackRock venture funds back in December 2022. You think Larry Fink likes that? He doesn't like that. You pulled. How dare you? Do you know everybody says yes to me? Who do you think you are to say you're going to pull $2 billion? You, Governor DeSantis, you. I'm not saying Larry said that, but maybe something like that went through his mind. Florida's chief financial officer said his department would pull $2 billion worth of its asset managed by BlackRock. The biggest such divestment by a state. Again, biggest such divestment by a state opposed the asset managers' environmental, social, and governance policies. The move will hardly dent anything with BlackRock. This company's an A2. $10 trillion of assets under management. They don't really care about that what they do care about is an article that says a state had the brass to stand up against BlackRock. What? Because if you do that, maybe you're going to teach other states to follow Governor DeSantis. That's not good for them. By the way, if you want to read further, you can. We'll put the link below. But I want to read one of them here. Some things that he's prohibiting. Prohibiting the financial sector from considering so-called social credit scores. There's a lot of people that are worried about the social credit scores because they're doing that in a lot of different places. In banking and lending practices that aim to prevent Floridians from obtaining lines of credit and bank accounts. Can you imagine if somebody says, I don't like what you posted the other day. Nope, we're not going to give them this loan. Florida's trying to protect that from becoming the norm that's become in many different places. They had it in Europe, you had the you know vaccine passport, you were traveling at the airports. Can you imagine? Like they don't want to bring that to the state of Florida. So if you're against this, guess what? You support what Ron DeSantis is fighting against. But if you say, I want a social credit score, then Florida is not the state for you. I, I want to go a little bit deeper with this whole concept. Some of you guys may be asking a very valid question. Why, why would farmers be afraid of BlackRock? Who the hell is Black, BlackRock? Wouldn't you want to have a better relationship with Florida than a BlackRock? Well, you have to understand that when it comes on to BlackRock, they don't just give institutional money. They also lend to big companies. So imagine if you're worth eight to $10 trillion of assets, some of that money you're lending to people and you're getting interest back. So when you're borrowing money from a company like BlackRock, you don't want them to charge you 8%. You want them to charge you the least possible because you are in good standing with them. But BlackRock, if your score isn't good, they can say, farmers, you didn't do right with us in the state of Florida. Instead of giving this thing to you at 4%, we're going to give it to you at 8%, 7%, 9%. That may not seem like a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And by the way, when you look at this chart here, here's what you'll notice. Okay, Market size for broadly syndicated loans in America is $1.2 trillion. Europe is $200 billion. And private direct loans, market, U.S. market is $910 billion. And in Europe, is $120 billion. This is why companies like farmers want to be on the good graces of a place like BlackRock. They worry if we don't do right by them, they're not going to lend us more money. Does that kind of make sense? If you want to kind of unpack it and you're like, Pat, I want to know what part of that $1.2 trillion goes to different industry. How much of it is insurance for farmers to be afraid of it? Let's take a look at this chart. This is the U.S. broadly syndicated loan market breakdown. And if you look at this, the dark blue is the CLOs. Okay, these are collateralized loan obligations. But if you go to insurance, that's PNC and life. PNC stands for property and casualty and life. Light blue, baby blue, all the way at the top there to the right, you'll notice 2%. The 100% is 1.2 trillion, but 2% still equates to $24 billion. It's a lot of money that companies like Farmers, one of the biggest companies, they need access to that $24 billion. So it's real money we're talking about here. So let me give you my final thoughts on this year. Number one, we learned during COVID, one very simple thing, maybe more than ever before, that governors matter. Governor DeSantis had better policies than Governor Newsom, okay? One got people to show up here, the other one lost people. What is the problem of losing people? You got to replace them. But what is the problem of gaining a lot of people? Holy shit, prices are going to go up. You know, cost of living is going to go up. Everything's going to go up. So how are we going to handle all this stuff? They both have a problem. It's a different problem. When a company is growing very, very fast, you don't have money to catch up with the growth. That's still a problem. When a company is not growing, you're also losing money. Both is a different problem to solve. Newsom's got to make sure he makes an argument for people to say, come to California. No one 
one's coming. He's got to make a better place to say, listen, those of you guys that came to Florida, you got to stay here. So regulation, you know, some may say, well, we need to deregulate. And some say, we need to overregulate. California is overregulate. New York is overregulate. Illinois is overregulate. Florida is here. So as a parent, I have two sons. If I don't have proper regulation in my house, my oldest son could bully my youngest son. Employer, I'm an employer. We have employees. I need to be held accountable to certain levels. My employees need to be held to certain levels, okay? If one is over the other, the other one doesn't have an incentive to do something. So Governor DeSantis has to figure out the balance of regulation so these insurance companies don't just charge premium because they can and these other people don't go abuse and, and take advantage of insurance companies with fraud because they can. So he's dealing with that part. But uh, more than anything else, the ESG story, tells you it's real, that is involved, they have a lot of influence. It is becoming deeply concerning to a lot of different people. And there's a big part of America that doesn't want to live in a place that companies like BlackRock have such a big influence over what they get to do. Small business owners don't want to be controlled by companies like BlackRock. They want to be able to say, look, I got access to you, but I don't want you to give me access because of the way I vote or because I took the vaccine or because I did this or I didn't do that. Just judge me based on the kind of a business I built. Not who's Middle Eastern, not who's black, not who's white, not who's women, all this. That's just nonsense. Let me build a good business, if we have a good profitable environment, our employees are happy, we take care of the people in our community, reward us for it. Nothing more, nothing less. If we don't do it, we'll go out of business. So there's a reason why Ron DeSantis is running for office, because many of his policies attracted a lot of people here, and now he's probably being targeted, and he's got to show his fight. It's not easy. Not everybody wants to be a governor. He chose to be a governor. Not an easy job, but uh, I trust he's going to do his fight and show up like he has the last few years. Having said that, if you've not seen the video, by the way, if you got value out of this video, give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel but if you've not seen the video we did on esg it's a must watch by the way if you've not seen the one on larry fink click here but if you've not seen the one on esg click here both of them are great videos take care everybody bye bye bye, -bye.